Since the very beginning of the crisis, the Public Service Media Kids community, the EBU Kids community, has been exchanging information on what they were doing, how they were shaping the content for children during the crisis. And it is my pleasure that today you will be able to hear from some of the representatives of the community. I have with me Hildry Gudiksen, Head of Kids with NRK in Norway. I have with me as well Tiffen de Ragonel, Head of Kids and Youth for France Television. And I have with me also Luca Milano, the Head of Kids for RAI in Italy. So welcome to the three of you as well and thanks for being with us. Thank you. Thank you. Let's perhaps share with our audience today how this experience has been for you as well. I remember that the school's closure came quite unexpectedly and very fast. It was a question of, on a Friday, we started hearing that it would happen. And then by Monday, the following Monday, we already had to come up with new responses for children. What was in your mind when this, when this happened? What were your key priorities? Perhaps I'll start with Luca in this case, because uh, Italy has been even for longer in, in the lockdown. It, it all started in Italy. How was it for you? How did you leave this? At the beginning, the problem was uh, understanding the extent uh, of the problem because uh, very fastly it started uh, in a few small towns, then it became a regional uh, uh, problem with Lombardy and then uh, one day after the other, like a domino effect, we had a national lockdown, very, very strict. And also the first country in Europe and actually in the world to have a national lockdown with these uh, characteristics. And uh, we had to go on uh, broadcasting while at the same time uh, we were obliged to uh, the rules of uh, lockdown. So we have to close some studios. At the beginning, the first issue was uh, the same safety for all the staff who was working and for us and the families and also safety for uh, the audience and so giving them information on how uh, to stay at home and uh, what to do at home uh, during this uh, lockdown. We had also medical doctors and pediatrician in uh, a rashly made the daily show that is still going on uh, until now called the Diario di Casa in which in 10 minutes uh, every day uh, doctors, experts, psychologists, and also teachers give their advice together with a huge quantity of content from the homes. Well, changed uh, completely the, the way of uh, offering for kids because they, everybody was at home and more at schools and also the public. Usually in Italy on prime time, there are uh, in television about 24, 25 million million people, uh, we arrived to 32, 33. So it means that really numbers also and the attention changed. One of the comments that we first heard from Hildry when we started talking with the community about what was going on, I remember that you said, uh, well, suddenly television is a priority. Again, a linear television and radio. You actually also launched a radio program during the crisis. What were your key priorities or what did you have in mind when this all started to happen? Uh, the first day when we had our first Teams meeting and we, uh, we were all laughing and saying, well, this is funny, interesting to meet this way. And uh, to the next day where everything was kind of a, no a new normal, that was a, f that was a fascinating, fascinating first two days. Our main priorities were, uh, first of all, to give information to the kids and mainly to the older kids. So we built on the brand SuperNit, which is the... It's a news program for kids in Norway. And we thought that it would be the quickest um, uh, solution for us to uh, make a radio version of the program because it's so, uh, it's quickly, it's flexible, it's interactive. So we haven't, we haven't had that before, but that's the first thing we started doing. And then uh, secondly, we, ex uh, we expanded the SuperNet uh, programs on TV as well. And we also um, did, uh, we made a whole, a whole lot of new programs actually. And so it, it was about bringing information to the kids, but also about being a good friend to the kids, that they, one that they can do uh, different things together with, in a way to be, to be companionship, to help them feel less alone. 
And thirdly, the prior, our priority was to help with the schooling of the kids. But uh, that came after some days. Stephen, what did you have in mind at the very beginning? What were your key priorities? And actually, France Television was one of the first public broadcasters to come up uh, very fast with, uh, with uh, official somehow uh, education uh, on, on, on television. At the very beginning, during the first week, we think we need to have uh, to launch live educational programs on TV with uh, the, the brand LUMI, which is the educational brand of uh, France Télévisions. Uh, ch children out of school can watch uh, daily classroom uh, hosted by real teachers, which is uh, very important because I think it's very um, reliable and very reassuring for parents and for kids to have their teacher there in, in the TV screen. We focused on how to make the best uh, educational content. So at the end, it is half an hour uh, classroom because one hour may be too long and which the, with uh, very specific grades and uh, scenes for each uh, half hour. So that was the main priority because at the very beginning, you know, family, parents, where with the with the school book and they don't know how to give <laughs> their kids some uh, uh, education so i i think it was very helpful and it was very successful at the very beginning and the other priority was uh, to respond uh, with more edutainment um, uh, content and to uh, give uh, uh, children a place to uh, answer the, their question and the, they have a lot of questions about the, uh, the disease, about the being uh, locked at home, uh, about uh, 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 how can I play and have fun in, in this very strange and uh, weird situation. So to launch a daily uh, program, maybe it was in the third week of the of the of the crisis, uh, we decided to, to launch a new show called Allo uh, to answer the, the, the question kids uh, give to us uh, by phone, of course, because the, uh, the third main uh, challenge was how to make TV without um, uh, when the studio are closed and how to make TV when everything is closed and it's very difficult to have a team. So. So for the LUNI uh, content, we decide to have only one studio with all the rules regarding health and um, uh, social distancing uh, in this on, uh, uh, in only one place for all the content. And for the rest, we decide to be on a rem remote basis, only with phone and uh, the Skype things, using the the best of the digital uh, device we can we can add. And actually, you touched upon it, Stephen. You said information. Uh, part of it was actually to answer specifically to the questions that kids needs uh, had. Um, it is about making sure that. Uh, everything is told in a language that they understand and with stories that they can relate to. Um, I know that you've been very active, the three of you, on social media. You've been increasing almost the, the, the capacity to respond to kids' questions on an almost 24-7 basis. Uh, what are the key questions that children have been sending you? What are their ma the main concerns with, when it comes to the crisis and what was happening? What are the key topics they want to know about? I think uh, fr from other programs and from the radio shows where kids have questions, it seems like they're asking about everything. All kinds of different questions. In the beginning, um, uh, everything was changing so quickly. So there was new information all the time. But uh, now uh, we have more or less gotten used to this. And the kids know that the key, the most important thing is to wash their hands and to not be close to each other. So, you know, it's already... And it's already a part of their daily lives. So I think the questions are not as many uh, now as they were in the beginning. And are you actually, as I said at the beginning, uh, not only on social media, but you thought of those kids who are not yet on social media because they are too young. And you launched this radio show so that they could set, uh, basically call 
uh, and, and ask the questions to the presenters and to experts. Yes, we did. And it's, um, so it's, it has to do with age, but it has also to do with that not all kids in Norway have enough digital uh, things. <laughs> you know, they might have uh, one or two iPads, or, uh, but, but they also have siblings and they have parents who are using the computer and maybe the Wi-Fi isn't strong enough. So, so we, we, we actually made a point of going back to the more traditional uh, platforms. So we saw that linear TV increased enormously. And we thought that linear TV in Norway was almost dead for kids. But uh, all of a sudden that was very important and radio was not that important, but still we thought it was a good social initiative to take. And uh, also we saw the desktop, which is not very popular by kids normally, increased very much during uh, the, the first weeks. Um, so we tried to see all kinds of kids and all kinds of ages and all kinds of social settings and families and to help them to get the information that they, they needed. Uh, so that's why we did all different kinds of initiatives uh, in the first couple of weeks. Uh, you look at, for example, one of the things I remember you did, you said at the beginning, was also to ask some uh, people that the kids could relate to to tell the stories of their lives. Uh, for example, uh, athletes uh, telling how they do workouts so that kids could learn or how they wash their hands, uh, what they do while they're in lockdown, some of the characters of the shows as well. How was this? Yes, it was a uh, great response since the beginning of young athletes. We tried to look for people who are almost of the same age uh, of uh, the kids, uh, but uh, they have known, uh, and sport was uh, something of that. Uh, with the message, uh, stay at home, wash your hands. At the end, uh, we have to say we received so many variations of the themes on wash your hands, that at the end I said, no, stop, <laughs> we cannot continue go on saying wash your hands, showing how to do. But uh, it is a sign of the need of interaction. Uh, even with the public uh, uh, national television uh, that we discovered. Of course, uh, we have uh, in social media, on the Instagram pages of the channels and so, but also on TV. The two shows that we had, we are, we have now uh, new, the 10 minutes daily more information and entertainment show has uh, put uh, since the beginning um, a WhatsApp uh, number for video and uh, an email for drawings and uh, there was a flood of uh, materials we are uh, watching week after week how the quality of the homemade videos uh, are increasing now at the beginning it was just a child doing that now they they see what they are sending the others and we receive a video that begin of being of good um, of good quality in ideas and and so and also drawings i think that this will remain as a sort of can be an exposition of how families and the country lived these phases and we are keeping it uh, for also documentary and studies that can be done later because it is a real archive of materials mm -hmm. then uh, the other programs which is uh, our uh, daily uh, sh uh, school educational uh, program it started uh, one week later at uh, Defense Alumni, and uh, we also took some ideas because it is, uh, I liked uh, how the Alumni studio was put. Um, had, uh, it is live, and so the children uh, can interact uh, on social media live, uh, something that it is rare for uh, a children channel. And uh, we found that there is a real need of, uh, of interaction, of communication, which we'll have to keep in mind also for the future. They arrived to make questions. At the beginning, the questions were more technical. Uh, what 
can I do, what I can do, uh, then uh, how, when we will finish, uh, um, but also precise, uh, maybe families uh, with the parents separated, can I go to see this, that's what, uh, when now in this period that we are in the second phases where some interaction in families is allowed, how can I meet uh, my grandparents uh, without uh, ha having a hug with them? Uh, this uh, sort of information and uh, advice that is important, but it is, uh, is an, uh, the sign is that we should find more and more ways to communicate um, between program and uh, audiences. And actually, as, as you're saying, it's also about connecting uh, with the kids in different ways. We've talked a little bit about information and we've talked a little bit about education, which were clearly two of the key priorities for the whole community. But then, as we said initially as well, making sure that kids were okay from a mental perspective was also a priority. So it meant that they had to talk about other things that were not just coronavirus and the crisis. They also had to uh, be given possibilities to think about completely different things. And it's, uh, it's a period which is challenging for production, as, as we know. So, for example, Tiffen, how did you do it with entertainment slots? Did you put more of animation products? Did you take them from your archives? How did you find more of engaging and more hours of content for children? We don't have more uh, hours of uh, entertaining content, but we, we stay with a lot of that content on France 4, on so also on France 3 and France 5. And also we continue to um, increase the content we launch on o Oku on the digital service, uh, and especially new show for the older kids, uh, because it was a main challenge for the Oku brand. And we launch a new um, live action show, which is uh, ASCIP, which was uh, uh, based in, in, a college, in a middle school uh, in, in the south of France and which was very successful. Maybe, maybe it was a way for the kids to see what, what, they, <laughs> what they could live if school were uh, open. Uh, but it, it, so it, it's really a, a huge success uh, for us and it's more entertaining, of course, than the... the the educational TV show or something like that. So, of course, there is a lot of animation show, and uh, they are very successful at this moment because I think for kids, it's very really important to to be entertained and to have this small moment in, uh, in the day. Um, and maybe what is quite new is uh, that uh, maybe they have shared. Uh, some of that content with their parents and their family. Uh, I think usually kids channel are, are very dedicated to kids and parents doesn't know very well. They, they know how long uh, kids, uh, the time kids spend uh, in, in, in front of the TV uh, with this kids channel, but they don't know very well the content. I, I think they have discovered some very interesting things during the lockdown, so maybe it's one key takeaway we can have after the, the, the lockdown is that there is maybe um, something we can offer to parents in, in, a, in a kid's uh, channel. That's good. And thank you to Ben also for starting with the key takeaways. And uh, Hildri, I wanted to go to you because you, uh, in order to also entertain kids and make sure that they were still connected to some reality, and also that they had fun things to do and to think about. You launched your daily challenges as well? We had both uh, one show with daily challenges that was about drawing with one of the, uh, the most, uh, most loved and feared and famous uh, characters in our universe. Uh, uh, but also uh, we had, uh, I think we had a great success and it was wonderful to see how the, the hosts, our profiles, in NRK Super made content from home every day where they activated kids, challenged them to do different uh, uh, experiments or uh, gymnastics or whatever. And uh, as a lesson learned, I would say that uh, if you have profiles that can do, uh, that, that um, kids in all different ages like and love, 
you are just five minutes away from your, ne your next show or your next program because all it takes is that mobile phone and the profile and a lot of creativity and you have great content. Uh, that's at least our experience uh, for the last weeks because this, uh, we called it the home team, this, this show, and it's been on top 10, uh, on, the, on our top 10 list every week. Uh, in our VOD service uh, since uh, since the Corona uh, times started, so it's been cheap, it's been flexible, and it's great content. And it's like um, these these past few weeks or the past few months, uh, um, we've set a new standard on quality. So it's not like the, it's the pre-Corona quality, and it's the Corona quality. And this is great quality in, in Corona times. Mm -hmm. That's great. And thank you, Hilver, for that as well, because as we all know, uh, from all crises and from all bad periods, good things also come up. Some of the lessons learned for us, some of the good things are, we heard from Tiffen, why not more of family content on kids' channels? Uh, from Hildry, why not a new mentality, a new mindset and a new way of doing things? Because quality is not the only thing that matters and we can perhaps sometimes expect less, less from the quality and be more creative and more agile in order to be engaging with kids. Luca, your lesson learned or how are you planning to now go back to the, to go back to the normality, now go to the new normality? I would say new normality because the, our idea and problem is how to represent uh, and being contemporary in a situation that is uh, changing so fastly. So we are doing that maybe on magazines, uh, on a weekly magazine you can, and we are making uh, shows uh, from the houses with the kids today. But when you go, at, for instance, to fiction, to kids' drama, uh, how, what to represent? Because if we represent the old normality, you risk to be obsolete. Uh, and to show what's happening is uh, difficult. We are trying in these days and weeks to make an instant uh, series. That is a series that we started filming in Rome uh, on uh, Mm, uh, this week and we think to have on air in three weeks time it's a series of a five episodes half an hour in which uh, our protagonist uh, act the actors of a 13 year old uh, of a school series that we have already so people know them are recording uh, in seven separate sets uh, in their homes uh, with uh, a crew of uh, one person and uh, a remote uh, direction with a story that is completely written on how they are uh, living uh, this uh, period of uh, quarantine the problem is to imagine uh, how the world for kids will be in December, in January, because uh, in fiction we have to think now to uh, to the next season and of course uh, we will this is a, a task but the idea is that we have to keep this idea of being contemporary and be inter uh, interactive with the kids needs that at the end only public service television have been able to do while the others have been going on have been going on with the usual uh, offer mm -hmm. Thank you. So we have some key lessons learned from the crisis, not all of them, but we have some. We said more experiments perhaps with uh, family content, more experiments with more of agile and flexibility, and fast uh, creative ways to producing content to engage with kids, and also new stories and rewriting the way we were telling stories and new topics and new uh, reflecting the new reality for kids also on our live action. Uh, for me, uh, one of the lessons learned has been that um, public service media is always relevant, but during this crisis, they've proven to be uh, at its uh, best with really adapting to the new needs for kids and being there when they most needed their public broadcasters. Um, if uh, you're still uh, hearing us, then please know that on evu.ch you can find more information about all of the cases that have been mentioned during this video, but then also case, uh, best practice examples from all of the EBU Kids community. You also have a summary of the key priorities and the key things that our members think we need to take into account in order to connect with children during the crisis, and then also information on how to adapt to this 
new normality when it comes to producing content for, for children. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it and uh, thank you for staying with us. Speak very soon. Thanks for all. Thank